going on guys g2 here and welcome back to the bench today we are going to go over <clears throat> ar-15 stocks now they come in two basic i guess uh measurements you have mil spec and then you have commercial and if you've done anything like i've done you've ordered the wrong butt stock for buffer tube you just were on amazon or whatever, not paying attention, and you ordered a commercial size, and you had a mil-spec buffer, or you ordered a mil-spec when you had a commercial size. It happens. It's happened to me. Um, I've got some extras to prove it. So what's the difference between the two, really? Um, essentially, it's just the size. Um, the commercial buffer is thicker in terms of diameter than the mil spec and really if we were to do this in terms we'll just do this in millimeters because it's going to give a better reading um, the commercial comes in at I get a good reading here at about 29.85 millimeters while the mil spec will come in at 28.58 okay and that's essentially it so what's the big freaking deal like who cares what's one millimeter right wrong one millimeter means this this is our mil spec and this is our commercial so if you had commercial buffer tube in your AR receiver and you bought a mil spec stock it ain't gonna fit it is too big and it's also shaped differently to where it is not gonna work with what you got now on the other way around if you had a mil spec buffer tube and you bought a commercial stock it'll work okay it'll work it'll go in there it'll blow out the back like the typically do because they're trash um, but it is going to be loose and rattly and just a pain in the ass like who wants to hear that all day long okay not me so when we're doing when you're paying attention like I guess the question is who cares what's the difference there really is it's personal preference both of these, this is a standard AR receiver, both of these will thread perfectly fine. That's the commercial on a standard AR receiver. And of course our mil spec will fit fine on a standard AR receiver, no problem. So when it comes to having it for a specific receiver, it doesn't make a difference. Um, it'll fit on both. The threads are the same. The difference is, I guess, um, really, if you're like me, you're very particular on how your firearms look. Um, why I like mil spec. We're just gonna go to this. This commercial is junk. Commercial was made to reduce the cost to the consumer because mil spec has a little bit higher quality and tighter tolerances. Commercial is more of a um, a poor man's AR component. Can I say that? We just did. Um, so it was designed to be more economical for the consumer when ARs originally came out. Now, as it so happens, these are almost as expensive as mil spec now, and even sometimes are more expensive. Um, I don't get it. So when you're looking at this, so if let's imagine that our buffer tube was threaded all the way in to our receiver, okay? Look at your thread pattern here. So on a mil spec, we're going to do it this way because this is where your um, buffer retaining pin will hit. So on a mil spec, you're only going to have about 30, we'll call it 30 millimeters of thread, okay? Now on a commercial, you're going to have 
close to, well, you're going to have 40 millimeters of thread. You're going to have 10 more millimeters of thread exposed on the back of your receiver, which is going to be shown. Your, your stock is not going to go all the way up. Some people are like, oh, I like that because it makes me, you know, it's easier to pull the charging handle back. That's your personal preference. As you can see here, if you look carefully at the mill spec, see this little mark right here? This is essentially where the commercials threads stop. So you can see. Okay? You can also see side by side. Commercial is a little bit longer, at least this one is, um, but typically they are a little bit longer by about uh, three quarters of an inch. <clears throat> the bottom pattern allows for not, you know, when you're adjusting these, it's same six positions as the mill spec and the commercial, but the mill spec has tighter positioning as opposed to the commercial has a little bit wider you know when you're changing the depth of your of your stock the other difference is if you look at the back this is one of the easiest ways I'll show you the two easiest ways well we already showed you one the three easiest ways on how to spot a commercial buffer um, mill spec has a flat back it is flat okay because typically on a mill spec stock you are not going to have an exposed back right here unless you're using one of these kind of generic cheapies which have the cutout back here which I hate. Um, the mill spec has kind of a slanted, it's almost at a like a 10 degree break right here on the mill on the commercial. So that's another difference between the two. If you're looking at them side by side would you be able to tell the difference just like that? It's kind of noticeable. The other thing here is if you look at the footprint of the buffer, it's very the mill spec is very squared. It's shaped. It's nice. It's very very squared. Um, the mill spec, on the other hand, has this rounded hourglass shape to it. Almost, you can see down here where your stock will ride. It's rounded it's not cut out. That's another reason why this will not fit in a mill spec because mill spec stocks are set up for that squared off nice crisp edge as opposed to this I don't know it looks kinda sloppy to me. You can see just like this when that stock is collapsed all the way down <clears throat> how much thread is exposed between the two it's a big difference, especially if you're you got about 26 millimeters of thread exposed here, and then here we've got close to 32, <clears throat> so another 6 millimeters of exposed thread on the commercial instead of the mill spec. Again, they both will fit fine in your receiver. I'm actually going to show you here how much thread is really truly exposed when you do this. We're going to set this up to just about where, one more turn, this is about where it would be set at. Okay, So this is kind of your standard length for your mill spec. Now you're going to have your your back plate in here as well as well as your nut so you're only going to see about maybe about this much thread about four rungs of thread so about seven millimeters um, as opposed to when you use this guy you're going to have the same components you're going to have your same back plate you're going to have your same um, buffer nut there you go. Okay. So let's get this to where we want it. Probably one more. That should hold it. And then here, much, much more exposed. You've got close to 
20 millimeters already exposed as opposed to the 7 on the other. The mill spec now will take your barrel nut and that stuff out of the equation and you're looking at probably I would say 12 to 13. So you're still, even with your exposure here, you're still going to be seeing a lot of thread. For me, that is a huge turn off for the mill spec. Um, in my opinion, the com or it's a huge turn off for the commercial. Excuse me. The mill spec is the way to go. So, it happens, you're going to mess up, you're going to buy one, you're going to buy the other. Uh, I don't know, give it to your friend, save it for a, a cheap build, um, whatever. But, my personal opinion, these commercials, junk. Go with your mill spec. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, let me know. I don't know. Do people care about commercial versus mill spec? Maybe not. Maybe they do. Let me know. Until then, guys, remember, practice safe firearms handlings at all times. Make sure that whatever you do to your weapon, that it's unloaded and you know what you're doing before you do it to ensure that what you are doing is safe and falls under your local, state, and federal laws. Make sure that you are a responsible gun owner um, and do your due diligence before you try anything or do anything that may break or intrude on those statutes that are guidelined by your state. Until next time, G2 out.